Hi, my name is Ben Ui. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about how to start creating interfaces, user interfaces using Unreal Engine. Um, this is a kind of a live tutorial, so apologies if it's a little bit rough, but we're going to talk about how to start to create user interfaces if you've got some experience with Unreal, but you have never really dealt with the uh, user interface parts of the Unreal Engine. So this is Unreal Engine 5. Uh, it 4.27 should look pretty similar, and this is, should be what you're dealing with most of the time. Uh, so the first thing you usually want to start with is creating a user widget. So in Unreal Engine, you know, you're used to using blueprints to create kind of reusable pieces of logic uh, in, you know, for actors in the world. Uh, in UI, what you're going to be doing is creating widget blueprints. So technically it's called a U user widget there, you see in the tooltip. So the usual prefix for this is WBP. So we'll just make an example one. And then I'll talk you through the UI for the actual editor. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about like where to get started. So this is your kind of default layout. Um, the first thing you see here in the middle is the viewport. This is where you're going to be editing your actual widget itself. Uh, you're going to be putting things in here, laying them out. Um, yeah, it'll make more sense once we put some stuff in there. So your palette is your, your useful set of, of widgets. Um, so there's things like buttons in here, text blocks, uh, things for typing in text. And then if you create these user widgets, um, they'll kind of appear down here for reasonable pieces of code that you can also nest within here. So let's make a, a rough example. Let's say we want to well, I mean, I could talk about each of these individual widgets to start with, um, because you are probably going to use them. Uh, so by default, it's created a canvas panel here. Let's talk about panels to start with. So panel, the canvas panel, if we put something inside, let's put something inside simple, like an image. So if we put an image inside, the first thing to understand about Unreal Engine, uh, well, the UI system at least, is that, uh, panels can contain many children and the way that things are laid out inside other widgets is this slot system. So when you put something inside a canvas panel, it's actually wrapped in a canvas panel slot. And the slot is there to uh, give you the ability to change how the widget is laid out within its parent canvas panel. So in this example, you can see we've got anchors. Uh, that's what this little widget here is at the top. It's currently anchored to the top left hand corner of the parent with an offset of zero, zero, and its size is 100 by 300. So we can change that size here by just dragging the numbers and you can see it's changing there and changing there. Um, you can also change the alignment. So if we put it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, you can see it's now its size is the same, but it's aligned relative to the anchor. The canvas panel is probably the most complicated one. So, I mean, if we get over this, then the rest of it should be a little bit easier. Um, you can anchor it to the center of the screen. So, well, the center of the, this canvas panel. So, and this is what you can call the root widget. So a user widget, which is what we're in right now, will have a root widget and it needs to be one widget. So in our example here, it's a canvas panel. So we've changed the anchors here to be in the middle. As we do that, you notice the position offset here has gone from zero, zero to minus something, something. So if we put zero, zero, you can see it gets dragged down. It's right in the middle again. Um, say, for example, you wanted to make something that is like a toolbar across the top of the screen. There you have a preset like this, where you've set the anchors minimum to be zero and maximum to be one in the x-axis. And you can say this has now changed from being position x, position y, size x, size y, to offset left, offset right. So you can make it something like this, position y, you could be zero, and the size could be, I don't know, 50 and um, we want to change the alignment well the alignment in an x here doesn't really make a difference because it's being stretched but the alignment in y does make a difference 
So we set that to zero. So I'm not going to go completely through the whole thing here, but I'll show you that's so I'll show you another example at least. So if we make a if we change this, you can actually replace it. We can say, all right, so instead of a canvas panel, I want my root widget to be an overlay. So now I have the same image inside an overlay. So an overlay doesn't give you as many options for the slots as the canvas panel. You can set the alignment of the widget. So you can say, I want it in the top middle. Uh, you can make it fill horizontally and give it padding. So you can see we can, by using an overlay widget here or the canvas panel widget, we can actually kind of have the same layout behavior with this image widget. Um, so sometimes it's it's much of the same result, um, whether you use an overlay or a canvas panel. Um, you just have to kind of choose what you're more comfortable with. So as I said before, you can actually put more than one widget in uh, a panel. So you see we've got many here, and they all have this, they all have their own copy, their own instance of an overlay slot that is wrapping them. So the second widget I've said I want to put it in the middle. Um, and its desired size in this case is being controlled by the the widgets desired size. I guess that's another thing to cover desired size. Okay. The thing with this is there's so many different elements to so many different things. If we if we go back to canvas panel. Okay. So currently the size of this widget is being defined by its size x and size y. So. Well, the image itself technically wants to be 32 by 32. If we pick something so it's a bit more obvious. Okay, now this wants to be 512 by 512. We hide this other one for now. You can hide it with this eye here. So I guess we'll be covering a bunch of the tools here as we go. Okay, so it wants to be 512 by 512, but we've overridden that size using this slot. So the slot kind of has the the control of the visibility of the 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 way things are rendered inside the panel. But we can say size to content, which basically says, okay, ignore these. I mean, these should really be disabled. They don't really do a lot in this case. Um, but what is determining its size is this, well, is the desired size of the widget, which in this case is controlled by the brush size of the image. Okay. Okay, that's kind of a lot. Uh, I mean, there's so many widgets to cover. Uh, in terms of other panels that are useful. So we've covered canvas panel and overlay. I mean, the most important thing to understand is the slot system. There's too many people that don't really understand how slots uh, work. Um, let's try another one. So a size box is another kind of panel, but it can only have one child. You see there in the, in the tooltip, it says single child. So if we wrap this with a size box, that's another little tool you can use is wrap with. If we try and put another thing inside size box, it won't let us. Okay. So what's the slot? Okay. So it has its own size box slot, which has some, you know, padding options. You can set the padding to be 20, whatever you want. Um, and then the size box can kind of override the size uh, of its children. So you can kind of say, oh, I want it to actually be rendered, you know, a thousand. Um, let's see what else we can go through. I don't want to go through all of these right now because I'm just trying to stay relatively high level. Um, okay. So if you understand slots and you understand panels and you can understand that some things can contain multiple children, like canvas panels and grid panels, horizontal boxes, some things can contain one child, like a size box. Uh, and some things can contain no children. So panels are not a good example of that. For example, uh, image can't contain any children. It's, it just draws uh, an image and it's, it's known as a leaf, a leaf widget because within the tree, it's just a, a leaf. It's the final thing. So uh, what should we talk about next? Let's talk about, we can talk a little bit more about the viewport because there's a hell of a lot of stuff we have here. Um, so using this really great example we have here, let's delete that. Uh, you can see that it's showing us our zoom level here. One to one is showing us what it would look like on screen with no zoom applied. Uh, 
this lets you mess around with localization. This kind of hides or shows the dashed outlines. So you can do, if we have a bunch more of these, let's make a horizontal box. There we go. A couple more of these. And a button. Let's put another button in here. Oops. I don't know. Put some text in there. We can make it size to the text. There we go. Okay, so we've got some examples here. So you can kind of see if you have this outline, it will show you the containers within the root widget. Uh, it's useful for selecting stuff and viewing things, but you can hide it with G. It's kind of cool. You can lock widgets. I never really use these. Um, the most useful thing you probably want to deal with is um, screen size and fill screen. So for example, if you're making a widget that is going to be something that is going to be display displayed uh, filling the entire screen, like imagine you're doing your full UI uh, for your main menu, you would probably want to do fill screen. And then you can see how it behaves as you change the size of the screen. For example, you might have someone playing on like a super wide monitor or someone playing on like a really small monitor. You can kind of see how that behaves. So you could say, okay, let's say this is like a background image. Let's pick something rubbish as a background image. I don't know. Android icon. Okay. And you say, all right, I want this to be my background image. I want it to fill the entire screen. Uh, I want to see how it looks on a, I don't know, a big monitor. Oh, okay. It looks like that. But what about if I play it, I do it on like a 16 by 9 monitor? It actually snaps here, which is kind of cool. You can see how the your UI, you can see, notice how like the, the that strength stuff, it's trying to stay as 512 by 512, a set of 512 by 512 like icons here. You can see how it reacts on different kinds of monitors. You're like, oh, actually on a on a monitor like this, it it goes off the edge. So yeah, using these kind of settings is useful. Um, alternatively, imagine you're making a reusable button widget. So this might be something you, you'll do pretty often. Well, I do. So you're like, okay, I want to make a button. And I don't want to change how it's laid out because I want to be able to put it inside other uh, widgets. Let's do that now. So we're going to make another widget. We'll call it, I don't know, this will be like a nice reusable piece of code that we can put, make a button and put it in other, other uh, user widgets. Let's say we want a icon here and we want some text here. Let's call this icon. This can be like button label. I'm not going to go through how to like replace these bits yet, but I'll, this is more about how do you build up UIs. So, okay, so I've got my button as the root here. I've got horizontal box icon, but it's still set to fill screen. So what you really want to do is desired. This means if I drop this button into another blueprint, what's it going to look like? Well, it's going to size to the contents of the, the, the button. So if the button only says hi, it's going to be really small. Um, but if the button's really really long, it's going to get really long. Um, and so using desired can kind of show you that. And I think desired on screen is using uh, DPI scaling settings as well. So imagine you have a really big 4K monitor. You can set up your UI. I'm not going to cover it here, but you can set up your UI to scale the entire UI um, by like 1.33 so that the buttons aren't tiny on like a 4K monitor. I usually just use desired, to be honest, because I, I, I know it's going to get scaled up differently at different monitors anyway. Um, so we can use that example. We can get rid of this button now. And we can say, oh, let's use the button we just created, WBP button. And you can just drag it in as like a reusable piece of code. 
Uh, it's not showing the image there because I haven't compiled. There we go. Now it's showing the image there. So, okay, so we've covered a lot of the, the controls in here. We've covered some basics of slots. We've covered the concept of panels and whether something can have many children or not. Uh, what else do we want to cover next? We can cover this up here. So, I mean, you'll, if you've done blueprints at all in Unreal, you'll be used to uh, dealing with blueprint logic graphs. So this is exactly the same thing. Um, you set things as, as variables uh, in here. So if you make something a variable, imagine in this we had something like, uh, I don't know, like a vertical box. Actually, no, let's wrap it in a border. A border is effectively like a overlay panel plus an image. Um, so it, it lets you do a, like a background texture. Uh, I don't know if I have any here. The UI is usually what I put as my prefix. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, imagine you had like a background texture like this. Uh, you can set that to... Well, let's do that in a second. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we? There's so many things to talk about. What was I going to do? Oh yeah, blueprint logic. Okay. So say you had like a... Uh, something like a, a pop-up window. You have like title, label. You set that as a variable, and compile, and then go into your graph. And you'll see title label here, and that's how you can set up your blueprint logic here. Um, and for C++, you well, there's some other tutorials online to deal with that. Uh, but yeah, so here you can do set text uh, on the widget and like tell it to do hello world. Um, okay. So yeah, that's the difference designer and graph view. I don't know if I should be going through talking about individual widgets at this stage, uh, or still high level stuff. The animation stuff we can deal with. Okay, let's go through more individual widgets because some of these are a bit tricky. Okay, so let's start with image because image has some interesting stuff with it. So if we put this in the middle, and let it size itself. So this is slot information. So this is dependent on what you've put the widget inside. So we'll hide it for now. Okay, so the only major property you have here, well, that's unique to image is the brush. A brush is the name given to, uh, it's like the way that you are, the Unreal renders a texture on screen or texture or a material um, so here you can pick like a texture. You can say, okay, I want it to be how big do I want it to be drawn? It's raw texture might be 512, 512, but you can say oh, I only want it to be rendered as 32 pixels by 32 pixels. Uh, you can set it to be rendered as a box. Ooh, rounded box is new. If you render it as a box, it's kind of like a nine slice thing. If you've ever looked up nine slice stuff. So it's kind of a really bad example with this, but have we got any nine slice examples here that we could use? Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, now look, we have a imported button thing. Okay, so now I can show you nine slicing. So nine slicing is, uh, you can set your margin, which is basically like the offset from left or top or bottom, right? And inside that, is it going to show us it? That's no, not great. Uh, to the left of this, it's going to. Uh, I need to turn off size to content. Right. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you can see that, but basically the edges are being kept the same size, and the middle is stretching. I can probably make these smaller to like one point one. Make it 0.5. Yeah, you can kind of see the middle is like the same color all the way through. But make it 0.1. Then all the edges should still be the same size. You can see it sort of breaks down when you get really small. Um, but yeah, there's a, it's a nine slice thing. Just Google it. Uh, border is the same thing, but it doesn't draw anything in the middle. And it repeats on the edges. So this texture is obviously not set up for that. Um, but 
I'd generally just use box. So yeah, oh, and you can also tint stuff by a color in the image. So a lot of the time, the things I'll import, I'll import a black and white texture, and then I can like tint it more easily just through this property. Um, technically, th this is changing the vertex color of this uh, widget. So if you do use a material, you can pick up the vertex color and use that uh, in your material. And there's also a tint, which is part of the uh, the brush. I, I never really know. I usually just use one. So multiplying them together is not super useful. Just pick one and stick with it. Uh, okay. What other settings have we got in here? These are more advanced things. Oh, yeah. Okay. Visibility. So this is another issue. Um, so the other thing you want to deal with with the UI is if you're doing any kind of like mouse-based UI, uh, you probably want to be able to click on stuff or not click on other things. Uh, or even if you're doing a, a controller-based UI, you're going to show and hide stuff. So the five settings you can have for a widget is visible, which means it's you can see it and you can click on it. Collapsed is it's completely hidden and it takes up no space in the layout. So imagine it's like its effective size is zero, zero. Um, it doesn't actually change it in the view here because sometimes it can be useful to have a bunch of stuff here but collapsed. So if you actually want to, hiding it here only hides it in the editor. This setting is for when you actually play the game. Um, hidden is the same as collapsed, but it actually still takes up the space. So if I show you in a horizontal box, imagine we have three of these images that are well, let's go back to a little muscle thing that it wants to be, well, we put, make it as an image. Let's say it wants to be 64, 64, something a bit more reasonable. And we can size this to content. Okay, so say we had a couple of these. Currently, let's set them all to the same. You can do multi-select. Um, so if we set this one to collapsed, it would, when you actually ran the game, it would be like this. So one of them would be hidden and the whole thing would collapse to the left. If we set it to hidden, again, this doesn't show here, but it would effectively be like uh, this. It would be invisible, but it would still take up its desired size. So that's the difference between hidden and collapsed. In terms of performance, if you don't want it to be shown and you don't care about it like taking up space to keep the layout the same, you really should always be defaulting to collapsed because it, it simplifies a lot of the calculations for working out how big something needs to be for drawing. Uh, and then hit testable self only, self and all children. So imagine you have uh, something like a, a button which has a bunch of complex stuff inside and you want the button itself to be uh, not hit testable so you don't want to be able to click on it then you could probably set it to be self and all children so anything inside it imagine you had a panel for example like okay there's a huge nested stuff of like I don't know this is wrapped within a canvas panel which is wrapped within a something which is wrapped within a whatever and you just you just oops something replaced with um, you just know this whole set of stuff. I don't, it, this has got nothing to do with interaction. It's all decoration. I just want to set the whole thing to be self and all children. So in that case you would, yeah, that's what you want to use it for. Um, enabled, uh, it's usually used for buttons and interfaces and input stuff. Um, it also seems to make things render as gray half the time, which is kind of annoying. Uh, render opacity is kind of what you'd expect. You can make it render uh, more transparent. You can also do the same thing in images by messing with the opacity here. So uh, yeah, be aware of that. What else have you got here? Uh, these things are bindings that you can create. It's like a function that gets evaluated every frame to, and you can use it to set the, like say you want to have it like 
change the color of this thing. You could say, okay, depending on whether some other variable is true or false, uh, I want to make it show red or green. So I'll just make a binding. Um, don't do this. The binding system sucks and shouldn't be there. Um, it's really inefficient. And if you want to make something uh, change color based on some other value, try and do it using events or put it in native tick in here, like in this tick thing. Um, the bind system is just bad. Don't use it. Okay, what else we got? Ooh, let's talk about render transform. Um, so render transform is kind of another way of moving things around. You can offset something, you can scale it, shear it. Ooh. Um, why would you want to do this instead of using like a canvas panel and uh, moving things around that way? So let's try and show an example. Sometimes the canvas panel, maybe you don't, maybe you don't have a canvas panel. Like for example, if you're putting these images in a, let's put these back in a vertical box. Let's replace it with the child. Okay. Um, yeah, I sometimes use this for tweening. You can like make things move kind of outside of their usual positioning. Um, Scaling is not great because it, it doesn't actually make things render. Actually, no, I guess it does in this case. Yeah, you can do scaling. Um, shearing and stuff is for twisting things. You can also use it to make weird shaped hitboxes for buttons, which is kind of cool. You can rotate things around and yeah, it's kind of what you might expect. Uh, oh, clipping's kind of neat. Um, imagine you had a, a cool like icon image that you want to have slightly offset but you want it to be clipped so it's only shown within the bounds of the parent you can do this wait clip the bounds i think you have to do it on the parent there you go so the children within it will be clipped this is just a random grab bag of ideas at this point okay uh this is probably most of the stuff you want to do Okay, we can talk about some more image, more um, widgets here. So, uh, text. Yeah, we talked about image, let's talk about text. So, let's put this down here. Uh, this is the slot settings that we talked about before. The text content. It's another color and opacity thing, just like we saw on the image. This is how you change your text appearance. It's kind of how you'd expect it. Unless text is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, ooh, named slots. These are kind of worth talking about, I think. Okay. So if we go back to our button here, if we make a new button and call it something like empty button, what we can do is we could have a button here and we could define its appearance to be something like, all right, well, we're going to have to use custom because there's nothing inside it. So let's say, all right, I want my button to look like, I want to use that purple one I had before. Purple. And I want it to be a box. And I want the disabled state to use this disabled one and I want to draw it as a box again. So you can see I'm kind of setting up some standardized styling here. Um, you could keep copy pasting this, this exact widget, like this particular button around um, and like trying to update the styling. But imagine, you know, two years into your game, you want to change this, this texture. You're going to have to go find every instance of this button and change the texture. That's going to suck. So what you could do is you could use a named slot and say, I don't know, button content. Oops. Uh, make sure it fills up the whole thing. Mess with the padding. I don't know, maybe it's only two. Why is that like that? Huh. It's got like extra padding. Why is that? 
Having us too. Weird. All right. Well, so if we save this, so the named slot means that there's going to be a space within this every instance of this that we can put things inside. So that'll make more sense here. So if we put in our empty button, we could put it down here. I'm still not sure what's going on with the padding there. But we can then put in our text in one of them. We can say, okay, I want my text in here. Maybe in another one. Let's make a horizontal box. Oops. And another one, maybe I want to have an icon and text. These You can use these shortcuts for moving stuff around. So you can start to see, like, we can start building up uh, widgets by using this kind of, like, reusable pipe pieces. And the named slot here lets us kind of drop anything inside of our uh, widget. And you can have many of these. So you could imagine you could create a, uh, like, a panel widget that has a title and, a, like, a text area. Um, and you can kind of put anything you want inside there. So yeah, name slot is pretty awesome for when you're creating user widgets. Uh, progress bar is pretty obvious. Checkbox. These are for editor tools. Yada, yada, yada. Lists are a bit more complicated. These are for um, like showing many, many, many items without slowing the, the game down. If you're new to Unreal um, UI stuff, then you're probably going to want to avoid these for the start. Uh, expandable area. It's not the same as a spacer. Oh yeah. Okay. Expandable area is like one is literally one of these things. Like when you click this, you can have a header and then a content. I forgot they called it that. Invalidation stuff you can deal with later. Uh, what is a spacer? Those are useful. Spaces are kind of handy. So you can, if you look in this slots for horizontal boxes, you can set up some padding. So you could say, okay, I want to have these two buttons, but I want to make sure that there's like 10 pixels or 10 units in between them. Um, so I could say, okay, I want right, 20 in between this one and the next one. Um, another way you could do that is, let's get rid of this. Let's put a spacer in between them. And I want my spacer to be 20. So yeah, spaces are pretty handy. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I could show you how you can put the the actual widget on screen. Now I've actually got to this stage. Uh, if we just open up the level blueprint. Get the player controller. Create widget. Let's make it our example. And then we want to, after creating it, we want to add it to the screen. Add to viewport. Whoops. Add to viewport. And that should be it. Like, if you just want to run the game and have it appear on screen. Oh, I've got a bunch of other test widgets there. But yeah, you can see how these they've got these text blocks here. Um, yeah, this is from another test. But yeah, you can see that's how a simple way of like putting stuff up on screen. I think what else to use? Like, yeah, I think this should give you enough tools to kind of start creating widgets. Um, you basically want to create user widgets for like maybe your main menu, and then you could create like a button uh, user widget that you can then reuse in different places. Um, kind of like how you have, let's talk about it now. You have a construction script in other uh, blueprints. You could do a similar type thing here. So if, say for this, in this button, we had something like button text. We could make a, a text property here. And in the pre-construct, in the event construct, we can say, let's make this a variable. So, we want to 
make the button's text be the same as the variable. Um, and then the image, let's say, I don't know, let's just keep it as a texture for now. Texture 2D. There we go. Uh, and then this icon, set brush from texture. So, <laughs> so this is because we've set it to be pre-construct, this actually happens in the editor. So we can set a default value for this. Where's that? There we go. I don't know if we want a default value for this, but let's say it's our nature transparent thing. If we compile now, then in the designer, it actually has this default value, this fault appearance now. Um, so then what you can do is back in our example, now we've got these example, we've got all of these widgets here. Let's move these down a bit. We can change, oh, we didn't make our, we didn't make this variable public. There we go. So if we go back to here, we can now change the appearance of each of these. So yeah, that's kind of how you can do it with just blueprints uh, and use widgets. I'm trying to think what else is useful. Uh, widget reflector I talked about in another video. Now we can talk about animations, I guess. Um, now I'll talk about animations in another video. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It's kind of been a bit of a, a ramble about user widgets and, and like how to get started. But hopefully this is like enough of a, a list of, of things to like where the bit, where the buttons are, what do you need to be looking at? Because there's, there's a lot of, you know, things to tweak and lots of things to play with in, in the UI uh, in order to create a UI. But like, this is pretty much all you need. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, like stuff you want to have tutorials about, uh, let me know in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore B-E-N-U-I. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Have a good one.